Hello everyone, welcome to another video here on uh, YouTube, here on the Bible Catholic channel. If you're listening on the podcast, welcome to Know the Faith, Defend the Faith, brought to you by the Tucson Institute for Catholic Apologetics. Please visit my website at tucsonapologetics.org. Uh, today I want to talk about a very important topic, the topic of evangelism. You see, each of us has that mission. It's a mandate, so to speak. So I want to give you three steps to evangelizing your neighbor. Okay, so in the Gospels, we see many instances in which Christ commands us to evangelize. Um, one such is right at the end of Matthew's Gospel. It's called the Great Commission, and that's found in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. And I just want to read those verses to you. It says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Now, sometimes we mistakenly um, think that evangelism is something that is the job of priests, of deacons. But in reality, it's something that Christ calls all of us to do. Again, in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 22, uh, Jesus tells us to love God with everything we have and to love our neighbors as ourselves. How can we love our neighbor as ourselves you know, if we're not, if maybe they don't even know that we're Christians or we don't even know their name. Now, I understand that Jesus was not talking about our literal next door neighbor, but about every human being. Now, however, sometimes we also think that to be a missionary, we have to go overseas somewhere when in reality it could be right next door. So in 2008, uh, Pew Research released a study that stated that the Catholic Church is losing members at a ratio of 6.45 to 1. So essentially what this means is that for every one person coming into the church, there are 6.45 going out the door. It's a really sad statistic. Now, before I came into the church, I attended seminary um, at Liberty University. and It's a very large Southern Baptist school, and they were very well aware of this fact. In fact, in the evangelism class that I um, that was mandatory for me to attend. Um, Lifeway had a statistic that said that former Catholics are the second largest denomination, even ahead of the Southern Baptist Convention. And that group was our prime target for evangelism. They are aware of this, guys. So as a result of this statistic, there is a good chance that the person you live next door to once considered themselves a Catholic. So like I said at the top of this, I want to go over three steps to begin the process of evangelizing. Now, by no means, this, this is not an all-inclusive list, but it's a starting point. It's a starting point. It's a starting point to build relationships, to get people back into the church. So step one, know their name. I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? This is Relationship Building 101. You need to know someone's name. Here's another stat for you. Pew Research also says that only 57% of people know the name of their neighbor. Only 57%. Again, kind of a sad statistic considering that we live, we, we live right next door to these people. And they, they see our families, they know our routines, but we don't know their name. This is kind of a sad, a sad stat that points to the cult of busyness that we have in our culture. We're too busy to know the name of the person who lives in the house next to us. If you want to evangelize your neighbor, you need to step out of your comfort zone and make the introduction and strike up a conversation if possible. Sometimes people won't. But at least you tried. Now, I'm not saying go knock on the door and say, Hey, my name is William. Do you know Jesus? Just say, Hey, my name is William. I live right next door to you. Um, I, I haven't met you yet. Just start there. Start from basics, okay? Step two. Offer to pray for them. Now, I know this second step may, it may take a little time. It may, it may take some a few conversations before you're comfortable to, do, to take the step. And that's okay. Once you know your neighbor, 
there are very few people who were who will turn down prayer, even if they're not necessarily believers. For starters, simply just ask how you can pray for them. Most will willingly accept. Very few will turn it down. Another way to do this is to say that you're going to church and would like to bring their prayers before the Blessed Sacrament. Not only will you enter into a conversation, but you'll kind of you'll start building a bond of trust, and you'll lay the foundation for even deeper conversations, like you know maybe a misconception of what the church believes or what is the Blessed Sacrament that you're talking about. It can lead into other conversations on what in what the church believes. And to slowly dispel those misconceptions that maybe they have. Slowly but surely, there's going to be deeper questions that come up. But, word of warning, you will be watched. You're going to be watched to see if there is a a proof for the truth that you claim. So make sure you're relying on God's grace to live the Christian life. Lastly, invite them to church. Now, on the surface, this third step may seem intimidating, but remember, at this point, you've already you've already built somewhat of a relationship that's more than superficial. You may not be best friends, you may not go to the bar and have a beer together, but you know each other's names, you know where each other work, maybe. You know, it, it's more than just waving to someone who you don't know the name of who lives next door to you. Now, maybe they're not ready to go to Mass, and that's fine. Maybe invite them to another activity at your parish, you know, a Bible study, parish picnic, or any other number of functions that may be going on. This will allow your neighbor to see, or or your friend, whichever, at this point, hopefully your friend, allow them to see that there are, see some of the huge misconceptions that, that are directed at the Catholic Church. It will allow them to see real people who are trying to live their faith. Introduce them to friends that you have at the parish. It's scary to go into an environment and not know anyone. Like I said a minute ago, this is not by any means an exhaustive list, but it lays the foundation for building relationships that lead to evangelism. Guys, the fullness of the truth is in the Catholic Church, and many have walked away, and this really needs to... It's depressing in some respects, but we need to be honest with it. But this should make us spring into action. And that action starts right here in our homes with the people closest to us. God bless you. Thank you for joining me on this episode here on YouTube and on the Know Your Faith, Defend Your Faith podcast. Please visit my website at tucsonapologetics.org. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a fantastic day. God bless you all. (music) 